In this section, we're going to deal with several concepts, the concept of an eigenvalue, eigenvector, and the process of diagonalization. So let's get started. So let's say we have a linear transformation called t, and then we're going to apply this to a vector called alpha. And then this process is going to output some other vector for us. It's called beta. So now we're going to investigate a very special class of vectors. We're going to investigate vectors where, after you apply the linear transformation, the resulting vector isn't just any other vector. It's going to be equal to the vector itself multiplied by a scalar. So any vector that behaves in such a way is called an eigenvector. And then the corresponding scalar is called an eigenvalue. So this is where these two terms come from. So now I'm going to try to express all this using matrices. So recall from the linear transformation video, we can associate uh, each uh, linear transformation with a matrix. So let's call the matrix associated with this linear transformation T. So for n-dimensional vector space, T is going to be an n by n matrix. So let's say we're dealing with a vector space called V that is n-dimensional. So that means uh, a basis for this vector space is going to contain n vectors. So let's say we're dealing with n-dimensional vector space, our T is going to be an n by n matrix. And then our alpha, I'm going to represent this with a matrix A, which is going to be an n by 1 matrix. So this matrix would contain all the scalars required to construct a linear, combina uh, linear combination of this vector. So let's say for this vector space we have a basis and then we can represent alpha as a linear combination of the vectors within this basis. So let's say the basis within this vector space contains the vectors e1, e2, all the way to en. And so we know that we can represent alpha as a linear combination like this. And so A would be a column matrix that contains all the scalars you use to construct this linear uh, linear combination. So it contains all these all these scalars. So that we can represent the left-hand side expression as uh, using matrices like this. So this uh, we've actually showed this process once in the linear transformations videos. So you can check that out if you need uh, you need a re you need a bit of refreshing for this. So this is the left-hand side expression. For the right-hand side, we have lambda multiplied by alpha, which once again we can represent using the n by one column matrix A. So using this matrix representation, we can actually come up with a way for us to find what the eigenvalues should be. So let's move on to a new page. So we arrived at this expression. So we have an n by n matrix, an n by one matrix, a scalar, and an n by one matrix. So I'm going to change this, change this up a bit by slipping in the n by n identity matrix. So in case you don't remember, the identity matrix is a matrix where all the diagonals are equal to one, so in, uh, and all the other terms are equal to zero. So any other matrix multiplied by the identity matrix is just going to be itself. So the identity does, matrix doesn't change anything. That's why I can always slip in the identity matrix like this. And so now I can move everything over to the left-hand side. I'm going to subtract this term over to the left-hand side. So the left-hand side, I'll have t minus lambda i times a is equal to 0. So this t minus lambda i is going to be an n by n matrix. This, as always, is an n by 1 matrix. And then this 0 is actually an n by 1 matrix. This is a matrix that contains, an n by 1 column matrix that contains where all the elements are equal to 0. And so you see that we, we need to satisfy this relationship over here. And then you can see that there are two possibilities. Either we can find a, an inverse for this matrix, which would imply that the eigenvector A is equal to the inverse of this vector multiplied by 0, which would just result in 0, the, the n by 1 column matrix where all the elements are equal to 0, so when everything is equal to 0. So in that case, that means our eigenvector is going to have scalars that are, that's, all, that, that, that's going to be all equal to 0. So that means alpha in the end is just going to be equal to the null vector. And you can see that for whatever linear transformation, the null vector uh, always works uh, for, this, uh, for this expression. The null vector always satisfies this expression. And that's why the null vector is called the trivial solution. So we are, it's actually an unimportant solution because it always works. So uh, when we're trying to find an eigenvector, we're going to, find, we're going to be focusing on finding vectors that are not null vectors that also satisfy this relationship. So that is why we don't want solution. We don't want the null vector. We're not considering the null vector. But it seems like here, uh, 
it implies that if we can find an inverse for this matrix, then the eigenvector has to be equal to the null vector. And so that is why we come to the conclusion that in order for us to, to find meaningful solutions uh, for, this, uh, for this term over here, it has to be the case where this matrix cannot be uh, cannot be uh, where, where you cannot find a, uh, an inverse for this matrix because if you do then all you're going to get is the trivial solution the null vector and so that is why we come to this conclusion that we cannot allow this matrix uh, we, we, we cannot allow this matrix to have an inverse so inverse cannot exist for this matrix and so that implies that the determinant of this matrix is equal to zero and this actually gives us a, a, an equation by which we can find what the eigenvalues should be. So for an n-dimensional vector space, uh, we would get n different possibilities. So we get n different eigenvalues. So uh, all this sounds very abstract. So let's try to demonstrate this with an example. So let's say we're dealing with a two-dimensional vector space. And then within this vector space, we have a linear transformation called T. And then we can res uh, represent this linear transformation using a matrix equal to something like this. And so let's try to find the eigenvalues for this uh, linear transformation. So remember, uh, let's just try to plug in, plug everything into this expression. So T A is equal to lambda A. So T, which is just equal to this. So let's say A is equal to X1, X2. So recall we're dealing with a two-dimensional vector space. That's why uh, our vectors would have uh, two components because if you have a vector space that's two-dimensional then uh, a basis for this vector space would contain two vectors and so any other vector within this vector space would would just require two scalars for you to identify it. So x1, x2 would correspond to these two scalars. So you arrive at this expression and then we're just going to do what we did before. We're just going to move everything to the left hand side. So minus lambda i x1 x2 and then as per our reasoning before if we can find a, find an inverse that means this is just going to be 0 0 which is the trivial solution so we need to require this matrix to not have an inverse that means the determinant of t minus lambda i is equal to 0 and so now we now that we're dealing with an example we can actually calculate this out explicitly so the determinant of t minus lambda i t is equal to 2 2, negative 3, negative 5, minus lambda i. i is the identity matrix, which in this case is equal to this because we're dealing with a 2 by 2 matrix. We're dealing with 2 by 2 matrices over here. So that means the determinant of 2 minus lambda, 2, negative 3, negative 5 minus lambda is equal to 0. And the determinant of such a matrix is just equal to the diagonals multiplied together minus these two multiplied together. So minus negative 6. So that means plus 6 is equal to 0. So you see we have a quadratic equation. And so that is why we would uh, we would expect to find two possible possibilities for our eigen, eigenvalues. Because for a quadratic equation, you would expect two possible solutions. And so that is also why for n-dimensional vector spaces, you would expect n different solutions. So this is really just a, pros uh, a result of, of uh, solving equations. So here we can try to expand this expression. We have negative 10 plus 5 lambda minus 2 lambda plus lambda square plus 6 is equal to 0. That means lambda square plus 3 lambda uh, minus 4 is equal to 0. And now we can try to factorize this. And so that this should be equal to lambda plus 4, lambda minus 1 is equal to 0. And so you see lambda is equal to negative 4 and lambda is equal to 1. So these are the two possibilities. So for this matrix, we have found the, uh, the corresponding eigenvalues.